<laughs> Invocation of the pledge. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> please bow our heads, please. Father, we're here today to ask for your blessing and guidance in the performance of our duties as elected officials. We pray for strength, love, knowledge, and understanding. Help us to recognize and solve the problems that we are presented. Make our solutions fair and just, the best interest of everyone. Help us to overcome our shortcomings and keep us united as a team to work for the betterment of the city and its people. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> We have a special guest here tonight. If Mr. A.J. Shockley would please stand. He is with Venture Crew 37 and he is working on his communications merit badge. And his dad, dad is Mr. Jim Shockley in the back. So we're glad to have you all here today and hope we won't throw too many rocks and stones at each other. We're moving to our pledge, uh, our um, presentation of delegations. At this time, we recognize Carol Morales of the Cemetery Department for 25 years of service to the city of Griffin. Um, I think Cynthia, maybe Joanne, I don't know. Well, you're 1992. Maybe neither one of you were on board. I can't remember. <laughs> so when, <laughs> well, when I came here in 1992, we didn't have a planning and zoning department. <clears throat> Carol, I believe you were on board, right? And Carol was here, and that's a long time ago, but she's got five years on me. And uh, when the opportunity came along, uh, Carol came to work for us in the cemetery. Not only does she show up and work on time, very dedicated individual, she um, is the backup. So when Sherry Thaxton, the cemetery superintendent, is uh, on leave or has to be out of the office, this is the trustee solo right here. And they go through the computer, help all our customers, they answer mega calls. Sherry's work um, has worked for me as a secretary, and then she moved up in Franklin. And then Carol came on board. So after 25 years, five years longer than me, it's really a great honor to see somebody um, make it to that level. And this year, um, it's 25 years in recognition uh, of distinguished service with my greasy fingers all of this. And I'm going to sit down because you all listen to me a whole lot. <laughs> and if she wants to say something, you're more than welcome. to say thank you very much. I've enjoyed working with the city. Uh, when I moved to Griffin in 1981, I only knew my neighbors and a few people at church. But after I came to work with the city, I met an array of people. And I have got so many friends now in the community and feel a part of the community after 25 years here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Okay, now we'll move into um, a citizen's comments. At this time, the chairperson opened the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for public, for public hearing or to a concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinions. The chairperson reser reserved the right to limit comments to um, matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. On my Is there anyone on my left that would like to come forward and address the board? Is there anyone on the right that would like to come forward and address the board? Thank you. Okay, we'll move into our public hearings. Our public hearings are conducted to allow public comments on specific advertised issues such as rezoning, ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative action to con be considered by the City Commission. Um, receive comments regarding a request to rezone approximately to Point 21 plus or minus acres located at 935 South Hill Street from institutional to planned commercial district. 
Good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, this is a rezoning request by Mr. Kip Wise to rezone the property located at 935 South Hill Street, consisting of 0.12 plus minus acres from Institution of the Plant Commercial District. Uh, the request is to enhance the existing store by remodeling and enlarging the existing pocket store use on site and keeping it as a family owned business. Staff recommend approval of the request. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Board at the um, February 20th 2012 Planning and Zoning Board meeting recommended approval of the request as well um, with one recommendation that with, with a footnote not a really recommendation that uh, at the time we thought that this was this property was part of the original citywide rezoning that we did and what we found out in consultation with the city attorney is this probably was a map error that was drawn over not only <laughs> Mr. Kip Wise's property uh, but also the apartment complex um, that's also at the corner of uh, 8th, 9th, um, and uh, South Hill Street, that's just south of there, um, was probably caught in this rezoning and somehow this map changed. Um, we assumed that it happened back in 2001 when the airport overlay district was approved. We thought, we think that staff in some way uh, adjusted the zoning line for the underlying zoning, which was institutional. Um, and we're probably going to ask for, um, for the board to give us the authority to um, reimburse Mr. Wise for his rezoning fees and bring them through this process because it was an error basically on, at, at, at the staff level that was done some 11, 12 years ago. Um, but staff did recommend approval of this request and we'll go back and look at the other properties that were impacted by this shift in the map and probably bring those through and just from our standpoint, initiate a citywide rezoning on those city rezoning on those parcels to put them back. Just there. to be safe procedurally, we felt like we needed to take the other parcels through the procedure set out in the state zoning procedures law, just like this one has tonight. But they should be without charge because it clearly appears to be an error in this case. Well, I'm delighted to see the city step up and accept responsibility and leave them with a payment. That's that's the honorable thing to do. I, Thank you. We didn't know it's a good thing to be of an attorney that's been here since 1900. Um, <laughs> since 1900. Yeah, here since 1900. Drew's been going there. That knows all of this, and he brought it to my attention the other evening. I'm about for Kip's being commercial. I've been down there too many times. Right? <laughs> you had thought that when we uh, redid our alcohol ordinance, because uh, Kip was grandfathered into that particular ordinance, when we did that back in what? What year did we do that? Well, actually, under the alcohol ordinance, the property has to be zoned commercial, and I know. you know, well, I, I, well, this, yeah, we we never could find any textual change that was ever approved by this board. It, it appears to just be a map error when the airport, the National Guard, and the Georgia DOT operations center out there were all yeah. are the other places. The the <coughs> there's, there's two others uh, from yeah. you, Kips coming back north on Hill north. Street. There, but two other. If you look businesses at it, and then the apartments wall. Yeah. If you look at your the staff report, the, the map that illustrates Mr. Wise property outlined in red is yeah. 935. So 929, 927, 925 uh, probably impacted by this, this situation. But we need to just bring those back. And 925, it go back to like an HDR category? It'll probably go back to re, you know whatever whatever, whatever, it, was, whatever it was prior, before it prior to so it, it, might be, it might not be it might not be multifamily it might have been commercial. Uh, it does work. We're going to rezone. But you have the apartments back in there. Yeah, we'll rezone those. We'll we'll go back and dig on some of the old maps and see what they were and, and bring it forward to whatever that zoning was before. Okay, so do we need to vote on it? Uh, yeah, we've, we've duly advertised it. And, uh -huh. Right. So, yes. Yeah, It'll okay. be on the agenda for action if you mention Okay. Um, you're done, Frederick? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I received comments regarding first uh, reading of an ordinance creating a new unified development co code. You might want to just take a look at the ordinance that's in the book. It's a little different than what you're customarily used to seeing. But upon adoption of this unified development code tonight, you'll actually be creating a second code for the city of Griffin. You've got your, your code of Griffin, Georgia, which you've had today, which meets the, the state law requirements for codification of your ordinances. And the decision was made when you undertook this project to 
take the zoning, the development, and the sign regulations out of the code of Griffin and put them into one separate code, mainly for convenience of, of people who come in who are involved in the development process. So we've had to go through and basically uh, save from repeal the existing provisions in the code of Griffin, and you're, you're restating and readopting the code of Griffin along with the creation and adoption of a unified development code. I think there's one provision Fred's going to talk to you about the sign ordinance that we've got some confusion over. Yes, and, and commissioners, I, I, I want to thank you guys for being patient and the city manager for being patient. Um, with staff, planning staff, we've gone through this process over the last three years. Um, but it's, I know it's been something that's been long awaited by the development um, community uh, to have something that's codified, uh, unified, that they can look at and make determin of, determinations from. Um, that's easy, readable, um, and gives illustrations to some of our requirements uh, as it relates to land development and so forth. But on page 205 of your Article 12 of your Unified Development Code, if you have it in front of you, it should be 1205A, which is prohibited signs. Um, we just need some direction a little bit on how to address this, and this goes back to your um, also to affect your changeable copy signs, the ones that you know that we scroll back and forth, um, the lights, and I'll use a good one. Uh, Moxie Blue mm -hmm. is, is kind of a good one to think of on West Taylor Street. Um, we, were, we were looking to see where we'd gotten some final determination from you guys as to how we wanted to address that, um, whether to keep it as is. Subparts two and three. Sub subparts two and three. Sure. Um, whether we keep it as is, or do you guys want us to eliminate those provisions? or to make some other further amendments to them. Um, we were, I know we have a bunch of them out, that, out that are presently now that even if we change the ordinance would be grandfathered until they either cease to exist. Um, but how do y'all want us to uh, approach this? Did we find out what DOT regulations are in regards to what they recommend? Or what GDOT, they regula GDOT basically regulates the billboards and they think they allow for flashing for change every five seconds. Um, but that's billboards as it relates to highways and interstate. Um, we still got to determine because you have businesses and, and the technology is changing where a lot of people are going to the LED types of um, changeable copies. Um, that by definition, we say that a sign that lights, flashes in series, lines, or rows, or otherwise animated, and then three is flashing, blinking, and illuminating signs. Are prohibited. If you go, you just take that on its on its face, literal interpretation of that ordinance. All all changeable coffee signs that we approve would be that are electrified. That are electrified yeah. would be basically prohibited signs. And do y'all want to rather that than taking it out? What we thought is take two and three and, and add to the end of those sections, other than fixed changeable copy signs permitted by this article. So that would allow to have a, where somebody's got their primary sign and then has a changeable copy sign under it that's an LED sign where the message may scroll or, or it could, you know, flash, uh, be a fixed message that, that flashed. So LED signs will do a number of different type activities. But okay, so you want to add what words again? To we would add other, other than fixed Changeable copy signs permitted by this article. That's the, that's the only place that you are addressing uh, LED signs. Yes, ma'am. Did you did you take away the fact that someone could put a different message on a a, a building that they own? Well. The reason why we, we haven't addressed that because we'd be getting into a content, looking at whatever they, they regulate from a content standpoint, which we prohibited from doing by law. But right, that's um, what I would so we're not. We're not that out. So that, initially, I think we had it in there. Well, we discussed it. The I think what we did was allow for, and I guess the law is allowed for. If I have a business, um, I can advertise on my sign. Um, I could advertise Drew Whalen's business, or I could advertise my business. Yeah. 
I think, and Drew can speak to this, from a legal standpoint, we can't prohibit that because that's getting into content. So our ordinance doesn't, in its current step format right now, we've done away with content that's requirements. That's, that's what I so yes, saying. we've moved away, we've moved away from, from, get, from prohibiting content. I know that one of the billboard, or the billboards, one of the changeable copy mm -hmm. signs or monument signs that we did approve of true a variance, um, we had put some stipulations on, on one of those to prohibit advertising, but we realized that that's obviously a problem now that the properties change hands and it's problematic to try to regulate that, being that you, that's imprinted on the First Amendment right to, to free, free speech. And that's basically what Are government signs. Are you taking signs. out the amount of time that the copy has to change? On no, the we're, 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 keeping it, we're keeping it the same. Um, Where is it mentioned? That will release the billboard, so Fred. No, on the changeable copy sign, there's a there's a time period fixed to, to how long they can change over. We have not amended that, so we're gonna we're gonna still regulate those right, as is. Show me, show me where it is. Hold on, ma'am. I'll get that to you right now. C, number four, as it governs changeable copy signs for commercial, for property that is owned multifamily, commercial, industrial, and institutional, uh, LED, LED displays on changeable copy signs shall not flash or stimulate movement. Color copies changes shall not occur more than one time per minute. So we'll, we'll go back in and make sure we did upon your request, go back, and I think we gave a, a copy of that memo to you when we did the evaluation of all of our um, changeable copy signs in the city, determined which ones were in compliance. Many of, most of them were, there were a few that were out of compliance, and code enforcement did speak to those individual businesses to adjust their signs, but we'll go back and make sure that that's still the case. So an example of the code plant sign, it could only change every one minute. One time per minute, and I think he was one. I think he was one that was in violation. Base station, those type of things. They can have something there for a minute, and then change. Now, in terms of the scrolling sign, I thought it was ten seconds. On, on a scrolling sign at LED, in terms of like a flag waving or. Those once well, it's a, a continuous loop, Doug. I think it's the same message. Yeah, it's the same message. So, it, it, however, let's say for instance, um, and I'll. I hate to use them, but I'll use Maxi Lou. Um, passing them today, sale on oil change. I mean, by the time I got to the light and was going through the light, I could barely get to the end of the scroll as it was going through. Um, just to give you an example of how difficult it is unless you actually stopped at that light to be able to read what's going on with the change of a coffee sign. Um, I would say that if, it's, if, it's a, if a, a message comes across and it starts, um, and this is something code cool for have to do. They'll have to sit there and watch it scroll and read and come to an end and wait for a minute to see if that next message flips. Um, that's the only way that we can do it. So like it scrolls at once every minute on, like on a the, scrolling Like LED. the Sasser sign, <clears throat> it flashes. Right. It won't be allowed to His flash. His won't be allowed to flash. It would have to okay. change from one sign <laughs> whole a minute, sit there for a minute, change to the next. That's the next correct. Minute. When are y'all going to enforce it? <laughs> yes, ma'am. And, and <laughs> I think his was one of the other ones that were out of violation as well. Uh, and, and our goal is to get with these folks and, and once again and say, hey, this is what the sign ordinance allow. You're allowed to have your sign. Just make sure that it operates within the confines of the ordinance. Hi, uh, how many signs is a, an establishment allowed on one street? Are one block? Okay. Primary signs? If it's if it's a if it's a piece of property that's that's not a corner lot that's not on two streets frontage on two streets, they're allowed to have one primary sign, or which we call a freestanding sign. Uh, they're allowed to have building signs at, at 15 15 percent of the facade. Uh, they can have a standard informational sign, one standard informational sign. It's allowed year round. Um, if it's during the election season, they can have as many as they want. 
because at that point they could say I'm a Democrat, independent, liberal, blah, blah, blah. Right, right, right. Um, and so we don't regulate them at that point. That is, that is the loophole as it relates to standard informational science in the ordinance, but that's to protect free speech. But if they're on a corner then? If they're on a corner lot, if they're on a corner lot, they can have two freestanding signs, two primary signs, one on one road frontage, one on the next. But it can't be both on the same road frontage? They can't be both on the same road frontage, no matter. Unless obviously the property has been divided, <coughs> and you just don't, you won't see that the property has been divided. But if it's been divided up, right. then yes, they're allowed. Like the CB, the, the two signs in the corner of Crescent and South Hill Street. Or what about the two signs at First Baptist Church? And here's and here's and here's the catch: if, if those signs have been in place prior to the adoption of the ordinance, they will continue to go on in perpetuity until they move them, and then they will be prohibited. I'll give an example: we lost Blockbuster a few years ago. Blockbuster, even though it's on the same parcel as your the Kroger shopping center, they had their own individual freestanding sign. So did the shopping center that said um, Spalding Village, whatever it is. They had their own sign. Well, when they left, Blockbuster took down their sign. There's a new business coming in there, and now they're asking us, and it's been over a year, to utilize that sign pole, and we said, no, can't. Your grandfather status is gone. That pole is non-conforming, hate it for you. Find a spot on the, on the main marquee for the shopping center, and that's where you have to go. Now, they want to come before you guys for a variance, and we obviously tell them, we're not going to discourage you, but that's not a variant provision. But if you want to apply, staff will recommend an aisle of that, which we've done for most of them. See, uh, that's the reason I asked. I had been asked uh, about the sign, First Baptist, put a new sign up, and now they indicated that it was also on Taylor Street. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more in the and, corner and where prior was. What, what most folks can't see with, with, with First Baptist property out here is it's in multi parcels. Yeah. And that's the one thing you can't see when you look. You just see the church building, but that part, that church facility is on about six or seven parcels that they right. split well, over time. Right. Well, and I, I, I told them that I'd ask about it. And, and, and that's the reason yeah. why you see that as well. It's, we have to look at it from individual parcels, man. Mm -hmm. um, in addressing. Not my battle. Um, <laughs> in regards to transitional homes, how do we address that on page? Before you leave the sign, no, before sorry. you leave, that's okay. Before you leave the sign this right. year, I just want you to realize the changeable copy sign changing every minute. A minute is a long oh, time. Yeah. So I, I just want you to be prepared to get some feed, some feedback off. To it. get some flack on the that. The staff has been reasonable. What they might consider a reasonable time frame. We, we used to do 10 seconds, didn't we? And 10 seconds was well, reasonable. It, it, and, and, and mind you, it's, it's, it's something that if you guys think that a minute is too long, then 30 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, you know, something I think is reasonable. But if, and that's, if, you, if the board wants to give us that direction to change, we'll do that. We'll make that amendment. And let, let, let me say this. We've been on this three years, and goodness knows how much time and things keep changing. I, other than the, the recommendations from Drew, I think we had to pass this. We know it's not perfect. But we're going to be beating on this sign thing till uh, the second coming, so we'll keep changing it, I guess. So we need to get this this new ordinance on the books, and we'll have changes coming, I'm sure. Well, I think with this sorry, this minute, we had not discussed the minute before, had we? This was a new a time element in here, I believe. I don't recall. Well, it was in the book. I mean, it was in the, was in the, in the, the draft. It the was draft. an issue we brought up to yeah. discuss, but never resolved. Well, where did the minute come from? That was recommended by um, our dear attorney that, that helped Help us, us put our ordinance together at the time back in 2006 when we were working on, on changing from the old format okay. to this one. I think she read with something that was typically industry, industry standard for changing and had seen in other communities when she put our ordinance together. Okay. Personally, I like the minute. I hate these things flashing around. Well, with our light structure, they got you've got time to read it in a minute. That close to one of your touch lines. Okay. That's it. Is that it? No. I can go either way. The transitional home situation. Um, I'll try to find that page. What is it? The colored spreadsheets. 
Yeah, there aren't spreadsheets anymore. Here you go. Uh, page page number seven. seven. HGRA and HGRB and special that adult entertainment can go is still in is, is industrial zoning. Yeah. Is that how it's... That's in, that's, that's, and that's yes. in the code. That's not in the zoning. So we, right. we didn't address, we didn't okay. change that as part of it. Excuse me. Okay. So with that guidance, we'll make that amendment. You guys will see that page change and we'll come back and reading. change that page for the second reading. So we'll slip the current page out. 205 and give you that page. Well, can I make a motion place? when the time comes to approve this with that amendment? Yes, if you will. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Now we'll move into our consent agenda. Consent approval of minutes from the workshop. Madam Chair, unless there's an objection, we were all available for all those meetings. I move we improve the entire consent agenda at once. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, let it be known by show of hands. 7 0. Okay, move, now we'll move into our regular agenda. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the rezoning uh, under item number five as presented from institutional to PCD. I second. And do we need to add refund funds on that as well? You can. We will anyway, but you can add that to your motion if you'd okay, like. Okay, I accept the change and refund his expense. And I'll second that. A motion and second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, let me know my show of hands. Okay. Consider uh, first reading of an ordinance creating a new unified development code. Madam Chair, I move we approve the new unified development code with one change to add the wording other than fixed exchangeable copy signs permitted by this article on page 205, section 1205A, as stated by our attorney. Second motion. A motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, let me know my show of hands. 7 0. Consider a task order form from HDR Engineering for an aerial survey and modification of D and O design and operation, design and operation drawing for the um, Shoal Creek landfill phase three in the amount of $18,680. I'm Chair, I move we approve the task order as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor, let it be known by show of hands. Seven zero. Consider a short form, I'm sorry, consider a short form master agreement for environmental services between the City of Griffin and URS Corporation to provide engineering services at the Shoal Creek Landfill. Madam Chair, I move we approve the master agreement. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, let me know my show of hands. Seven zero. Consider a resolution authorizing the adjustment of certain utility rates pursuant to the Municipal Code Index. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the said resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, is there any further discussion? All in favor, let me know by show of hands. Seven zero. Now consider a me memorandum of understanding regarding the proposed new airport. Madam Chair, uh, I'm going to move that we approve the MOU, and as you know, this county and the County Water Authority have agreed the annexation and changing the service delivery strategy to the city, as we've asked, so they've lived up to their end of our previous verbal agreement. And the remainder is just that we agree to discuss some issues with them, so I hope we can put this behind us. Second with a question, Dr. Keller. 
Dr. Keller, were there any industries right now that on the um, outside industrial rates that we currently provide for Spalding County? Spalding County, is there anything that would we would pick up right away or lose? County customers. I mean, are they yeah. do they use enough water to to go into that industrial rate? Okay, uh, I still have an issue with the uh, memorandum understanding as as is as it is writ written. I um. I feel like the um, the first um, number one on on the um, memorandum uh, the mem of understanding is set something separate from the rest of them. And our agreement under number one is with the county, and the rest of that stuff, which I don't have a problem with having a memorandum memorandum of understanding, is with the water authority. So um, I still I, I have some issues with it as it is it's been given to us. Well, the first one is sort of a all-encompassing. The first one is with the county, and the others are with the water authority. So, right. I don't have a problem with the memorandum of understanding, but I just feel like the annexation is between us and the county, and the rest of it, the stuff of which I don't have a problem with discussing or uh, moving forward to uh, negotiating with them. But I feel like our it is it has all the water authority has as far as I'm concerned, has nothing to do with the annexation of the airport. I agree. Can we, but that's sort of a moot point because the county has already agreed the annexation, so all that's over and settled. It's mm -hmm. sort of it is, point. so that, 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 that should not even be on the memorandum of understanding with the uh, water authority. Can we split this memorandum of so understanding you, where we could vote for just item would one? You, would you agree to approve it then if you just took one out that the annexation's already agreed to and approve the other four? I think that we should uh, take, yeah, I, I, because of the way the memorandum of understanding came about, because oh, right. this was a hurried uh, thing in response to a memo that Kenny had sent out, uh, and basically, as um, Cora said the last time we had it, it had to be studied in depth. We have two separate situations here. We met for 18 months discussing annexation of the airport into the city once it happened. Uh, and I, as I've said previously, once the, uh, once the airport is built and it's annexed into our community, into the city, it's a moot point. Of course the city will service the area that, that is annexed into the city. Uh, because the, the county took out, the night they were to vote on it, uh, and this is like you're beating a dead horse. Uh, this is when the head of the Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority says, well, wait a minute, not so fast. We have some issues. This might just be a bargaining chip. Because of that, I won't support this MOU unless it is separated. Well, and we have, a, we have a memorandum of understanding with the county, a goodwill feature because we both agreed previous to that abrupt action that the airport would be annexed into the city. All right. And so the other issues were the, the, the low points that uh, that had nothing to do with the county. It had to do with, like Ms. Ward said, Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority. Uh, and the, the thing that was, it was preemptive in the fact that Mr. Smith had already put it on our retreat. It was unfortunate that it happened two weeks ago or maybe almost three weeks ago now because Mr. Smith had already said that we were going to discuss water contracts at our retreat today. And we didn't. We wanted to discuss these contracts in depth and we still have got a lot of study yet to do on these contracts. Uh, those are my personal opinions. I think they both, I think we have an understanding. Now I will not agree, I don't see the point in trying to shift 4,000 water customers or sewer customers to the county so that they can maybe make their their Highland Mills thing uh, viable. It's not up to the city to furnish customers to the county for something that they have just purchased and may develop or was given to them basically. 
Uh, I think that we've got, there's a lot of discussion yet on the other MOU parts of the MOUs that need to be discussed. Even with that being said, and still, that, that part of it is with the Water Authority. Yeah, all of it is with That's the what the Water Authority has exactly. nothing to do with right. the now, county. Chair, let me ask you then. Since the county's already voted for the annexation mm -hmm. and authority, that's all done, water on the bridge is settled. Mm -hmm. If one was removed then, and the other four things we've agreed to talk about, Will you, or would you be comfortable with that? Yes, and I don't have the memorandum before me right now, but um, when it was brought to us, it was like for a discussion. Uh, but I, I, I could be wrong, but I think, and I'm like number three, it was saying to move, to start negotiating immediately. Uh, which, no. like I said, you know, if the staff has no problem with that, then I have no problem. Uh, actually, it says before the end of the year for the uh -huh. water contract. So. I'm going to amend my, change my motion to try to get this thing. And the other thing uh, was this, I can add, my understanding, uh, I, and I want some clarification, my understanding is that this, um, even if we agree, strike one, and we agree to, uh, to the, the, the other five with um, the water authority, not the county, this is not a, it's a memorandum of understanding, it is not a binding agreement. No, and all it says is, is to investigate or to amend the current board and sales agreement on that one. Well, a memorandum of understanding is as good as your word. I mean, you're basically signing that you're agreeing on your word, but it's not a legal binding contract where they could take you to court and say you breached it in some way. But I, I mean, when you sign it, you're basically giving your word. So I, I wouldn't I want to sign it and yeah. then go back. I wouldn't want because, to you know, like to I said, this back. guy, you know, right in here where it says in the water contract is saying that we would, um, the we compensate them 1% of, you know, those things, you know, we have not, as a board, discussed these things. So I kind of have an issue with signing this, and then two years down the road, y'all come back and say, well, you signed it. And, and Drew, do do that. I get that on the but we could always rescind a decision on it. I think it would be best to have two separate memos, memorandums of understanding. Mm -hmm. What we wanted, what, what, you know, everything was rocking along nicely. We had no forewarning that uh, the Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority was going to appear before the Spalding County Commission and say, oh, don't vote for that. They had nothing to do with all the negotiations we had for the 18 months leading up to uh, the good vibes, the good cooperation between two boards. And in one one motion, one motion, it kind of just went away. Yeah, but and so if two, the other issues, now the only thing that I knew that we were going to discuss on the, uh, at our workshop today was talk about our contracts with Coweta, talk about our contracts with Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority. I did go back, the other things on this, like the Kennedy Road Middle School, most of the people on this board didn't even realize that in 2005 the, the, the school board came to us and asked us to put that lift station there because they wanted, they needed sewer for Kennedy Road Middle School. The school system paid $600,000 and the city paid $300,000 of our citizens' money in order to accommodate the school system. And then in 2005, the county water and sewer authority went into a contract with Henry County Water and Sewer Facilities to provide water for the residents of Heron Bay, the Spalding County residents of Heron Bay and that portion of Minerva. Uh, and it says all future development shall adhere to the wastewater management plan. Uh, both sides overlooked that in the, the plan. I, lo I went back into the book because I still have that great big book. Uh, these are just uh, bookkeeping errors, more or less, that could be taken care of. We certainly, it cost our citizens for us to provide sewer to Kennedy Road Middle School. Now, maybe we've made it up in beef. I have no idea. But we were doing that as a goodwill gesture because the school system, Bruce Ballard, asked for it. We have all that in our minutes. Uh, and it, in this one, it said to amend the current water sales agreement as soon as possible to provide an option for the industrial water customers. Uh, well, all I asked for in that was I'd like to see the figures. Would it be feasible what we'd have to pay in order to get this done? Would we see a return on our money for that? I'm 
not sure all of these have been done. We didn't really talk about that today at the retreat. And then investiga in investigation of the feasibility of transport of the flow from the Cabin Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant to the Springs Wastewater Treatment Plant in the future. Uh, Mr. Dr. Keller has told me that our Cabin Creek, although small, is our most efficient uh, treatment plant. Uh, we, again, and then based on uh, a recent lawsuit that where Gwinnett County has had to reimburse cities in Gwinnett County for uh, using, and people forget that citizens of Griffin are also citizens of Spalding County. Uh, probably my biggest tax bill is from Spalding County. And so therefore, we have already are paying for a lot of this stuff as citizens of Spalding County. So I really, my problem with the MOU is it's, it covers too much. It has very, the only thing it has to do with the airport is number one. The rest of this is on this because the county did not go forward with what it said it would do that night and vote to annex, for us to annex this into the city. Uh, they only did it after they realized that we weren't going to do any more about it. And then they, they thought, uh-oh, we can't do this by ourselves, so we better come up with some type of memorandum of understanding. You know, this, now, this agreement, whether you approve it or not, it, I'm tired of arguing about the thing, but what it did was the verbal understanding they annexed the property, they dropped any dispute, it was all settled, everything's been settled, and they simply asked that we correct the the uh, water plan to what's on the ground. There's no blame. Nobody's blaming anybody. Both sides have changed it. That we just update the plan to show what it is. Number three asked to give industrial customers to the city because they cannot compete for industry with their water rates and so they're asking if there's an industrial customer comes to the county they can give it to the city as a customer so that's to our right, advantage. And, and we really appreciate that because so, that wasn't going to come about until Kenny had his meeting well, and told them that you know they had broken agreements that, with that, us. That's fine I don't care how it came about all I'm saying is they're trying to give us an industrial customer which is to our advantage and uh, the one percent is just something because it's if he's out in the county, he'd be using the county pipes, but he'd be a city customer. So that is really to our advantage that we could pick up an industrial water customer uh, because we can give them a better rate. And the number four in the negotiation, we are agreed that we're going to start renego renegotiating. And number five, all they said is when the time comes to either repermit uh Cabin Creek, all we do is look at what's cheaper. If it's cheaper to keep Cabin Creek uh, and repermit it, fine. If it's cheaper to send to Springs, fine. They didn't, we don't commit to anything except we'll look at what it costs, and we're going to do that anyway. So uh, Exactly, exactly. The so why not, why not just not agree with the county, make friends, and go on down the road? We, we are friends, and we haven't. I, I and like I said, I don't have an I don't have an issue with with uh, with the other things, but I, the agreement, the contract, the memorandum of understanding is not with the county board of commissioners. This part of it is with the water authority. Well, they both signed it both agree for their parts. And the reason I voted against this memorandum of understanding last month or first this month was because the county did not honor their commitment. I feel they have honored their commitment and these are talking points and things for us to move forward with. Whether we break this up into just you know item one for one memorandum and do items two through five. I, I don't feel like we even have to have a memorandum because it's gone they voted on it and it went to correct but it's just let's work together and <coughs> sometimes you have to hold your nose on I'm, I'm saying that a, a, a memorandum I understand for number one they've already sent the right. thing to so it doesn't hurt us to, to leave it in there or not leave it in there. Just, just take it out all right madam chair my amendment is my my motion is you can vote up or down that we approve the mou with removing item number one because it's it's moot that's the motion and you can do whatever so and approve items two through five? Yes, items two through five, one's moot point. So that's the motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. 
So we would we would basically be offering them a new MOU that is inclusive of items two, three, four, and five, which would have to go back to them. Well, well, then I think that would be approval. that would be the best way to do it. Two different. Why you were voting? I mean, if they got approval, bring it back to us again. Right? I don't know. They they just probably agree and say thank you for agreeing to those others, and one's been fixed. I don't know if they could bother to go through it or not, but that's their call. Okay. What um, unless there's someone, I mean, I'm going to vote for it with all five. If there's a fourth vote that wants to do it with all five and move forward, or we can. I'm not break because, it out like I said, I, I feel like that's the number one is with the county. It has nothing to do with the water authority. The water authority shouldn't even be in on that and have anything to do with that annexation. But anyway, the motion was that we approve. Uh, hmm. Um, the memorandum of understanding with the water authority, striking number one. Uh, all in favor of that motion. Wait, 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 wait just a minute, now. You, you restated the motion different from what he said. I just want to make sure we get this Did right I, for the record. What was in motion? You said, you said we said approved the memorandum with the removal of number one. That's what I said. Okay, I thought. but you said with the water authority. With the, with the water and sewer authority. Uh-huh. Because if we strike number one, the rest of it is with the water and authority. It's not with the county. And then that's what brings me back to the fact that we basically need a new MOU with items two, three, four, and five with the water okay. authority. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure that I convey if, what you're saying. If, if the wordage in there with the water and sewer authority is needed, that I'll my emotional include that. Okay. Second right. that motion. All right, what are you seconding? The motion that it is with us in the water authority. Items two through five. Two through five. Okay. Now, and that we will, are you wanting to create a new MOU? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, that's I just to get this beyond. I'm not sure. I don't. Well, we don't need number one anymore. That's been a, a, a conversation. I know, but I, I'm confused on whether I'm turning around creating a new MOU just with the Water Authority and submitting that to the Water Authority for their approval, or am I approving this MOU striking item one, which would, is then a yeah. three-part MOU with the county, the Water <laughs> Authority, and us? All right. Let me make some, well... We've got a motion on the board. Can you, you want to I would draw it? my second if you've got a greater. I don't, know, I don't know that it's great. I mean, We've all agreed that there's nothing wrong with items two, three, four, and five for discussion with the water, Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority. Since number one is already taken care of, you've given all that to David Knight, right? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Then we issue a new memorandum of understanding strictly with Spalding County Water and Sewer Authority that we will address items and rename them items to make them one two three and four okay. which were previously two three four and five if that's and a that motion way, i'll i'll second that that's the motion okay any more discussion all in favor of what joanne said <laughs> as long as we got it on record okay okay did you vote for her? i'm a, i'm a no okay, okay. all right okay. six yes or no, one yes okay Okay. All right. So it's done. Thank you. Okay. Oh, y'all got me confused, man. I think that is. <laughs> okay. Six, six, one. Six, one. Six, one. Okay. Uh, City Manager, do you That's have one? I, I was just going to tell you that I did uh, get the uh, resolution to Representative David Knight. I delivered that to him as well as sent him an electronic copy, and that should be going through the legislature uh, next week to legislate the uh, formation of the airport authority. And I uh, appreciate everybody's patience today. I think we had a good day and accomplished uh, a lot, and we've got a lot more work to do. But thank you for your patience and understanding and listening today. Okay. I have nothing. Okay. Commissioner Bass. No, I have anything. Commissioner Mara. Yeah, anybody who sat through all those hours as we did today cannot help but be impressed with our department heads and all the initiatives and the work they're doing at Strike and the Do Business Better. So, guys, I, I'm very, very impressed with all the work that's ongoing and where you're headed. So thank you.
um, Commissioner Dunn. We'd like to um, recognize Dr. Brant Keller, the Flint River Council, Boy Scouts of America, the Eight County area. Brant was recognized as a Silver Beaver recipient this past week for his efforts and energies for the Scouts. This is the highest level of honor that can be bestowed on an adult volunteer from the Council. And uh, Brant, good job. Wow. Thanks for all your hard work. Commissioner McElmore. Are you done? You're done? That's it. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cora. Nothing. Commissioner Todd. Other than I think that we did have a good staff retreat today, and our thanks to Judy for having hot coffee for us and then serving us lunch, and probably she had to stay and clean up. So, Judy, thank you. No, I don't Okay, I don't have anything. Make motion. motion to adjourn. Uh, all in favor, let me know by your hand. Cora, 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 C